All right, here's the uh, power supply that I chose, the T60B. It's um, 5 volts at 5 amps, 12 volts at 2.5 amps, and minus 12 volts at half an amp. So plenty, probably about at least twice overkill for this board, but uh, looks pretty good. Let's turn the power on, and we'll come down and see that it actually works. Yay. Um, so... Now we have a dedicated supply, so nothing can ever go wrong again. Um, and I think what we need to do now is uh, work on uh, work on some of the I/O. Uh, I did kind of look into. I have I have this wired up as output. I don't know why the wiring didn't work out. If I, I look at the schematic and um, it says pin 48, it should be the first LED, but. Maybe I just counted wrong. Maybe that's 50. Oh, yeah, this is 49. I have it wired to 50. Okay, so my mistake. Oh, well, we'll just have a bit zero as a, a blue and all the rest. All the rest. Uh, uh, all the rest red. So that's, that, that's fine. I don't know if I could get these 8220. What are they? 8226s. These are bi directional buffers. And uh, they're four bit each, so four bit and four bit. And I'd have to get another two to put here. I'll look to see if I can find them, but I have to have another two here. You can strap them to either be input or output. And uh, that's done. Let's see, zoom in here so you can see it. Uh, that's done with this little jumper here. The uh, bi directionality is, is run by this pin. You can either tie it high or low. And uh, that's being done. Uh, on this, this uh, I'll leave this one as an output, so I don't need to mess with that one. Um, but this uh, this one I want as an input because I have four switches here, and they are wired up to pins. Uh oh, pin 50 again. Mm, well, I better better double check they're being wired to the right things. But anyway, um, the bidirectionality whether these are being used as an input or output are done with this uh, little jumper area right here. And that little jumper area is a wire wrap area. Uh, so I did some wire wrapping back in the, back in the olden days. I'm feeling this uh, clock chip get a little warm. Um, so uh, they're done with this weird little tool here. And this little weird tool has a wire stripper, a wire spinner, the thing that actually wraps the wire and then an unwrapper on the other end if you want to undo something. Um, I had a battery powered one back in the day, so you go zip, 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 zip. Uh, but uh, these work pretty good. Um, and this one's made for 30 gauge wire, and I have some, uh, I believe this is 30 gauge uh, wire wrap wire. So, um, yeah, we'll give it a try. I will unwrap this little area here. Right now, the there's three pins, 70, 71, and 72. And on the schematic, uh, let's see here, 70 here. 71 and 72 are jumpered together. 71 and 72 are jumpered together, yeah. And that means it's an output. So I need to jumper 70, 70 and 71. So 70 and 71, oh, make sure I'm doing that right. 70 and 71, yeah. Okay, so 70 and 71 are these two here, so I need to unwrap that and put a wire wrap across those two. So let's uh, turn power off. Let's see if our unwrapper will unwrap. And yes, it did. So you just kind of stick it over the post and unwrap it, and it kind of I didn't do anything that time. Unwrap it. And, uh, well, hmm, interesting. Why did it work the first time? Just lucky, I guess. The, uh, the ones back in the day had a really big hook on them. Maybe there's something caught in these. 
Well, maybe they just don't work as well as they, as I remember them working. All right, so let's see if we can't pull this side off. We did. And over here, we can just kind of spin it around and, un and unhook it. To, there we go. So, oh, oops. Our wire is off. Okay. So we will need a piece of wire about the same length to okay. All right, oops. Now let's see if we can't do this. So there's a wire stripper here. You put it through. Yeah, let's you see that. And you kind of jam it down and then pull. There we go. And that unwraps a nice section of wire. And put it in here. Uh, push it down. Pull. Pull. Oh man. Pull. Grab it with some pliers. Pull. There we go. Okay, so we have uh, two sides. I think this side's a little long, so we'll trim him down a bit. That looks good. Okay, now we're going to use the other side of this tool and there's a slot on this side. It's really hard to see because it's black but there's a slot and if you go in here you'll find that there is a uh, hole. So there's a hole in the middle where the post goes but there's a hole off to one side and that hole off to one side is a really really tiny little hole that only the 30 gauge wire will fit in and um, so we will stick that in there and then we will put this over the post that we want to wire wrap onto hold on to the end and then we will spin it and as we spin it it should unspool it and how's that look hmm. that looks okay i mean i think that will work it's not too pretty I'm out of practice, um, and we certainly have a lot more, a lot more wire than we need. So let's see if we can't strip a whole bunch more off here. All right, and we will take that to length. Put this on here. Looks good. On to the pin 71. And then we will start to spin it. Ah, that one looks much, much nicer. Okay, so practice makes perfect. So, we can uh, test that with a continuity checker. Beep, beep, beep. And beep, beep, beep. Great. All right, so now instead of uh, 71 and 72, we have 70 and 71. So now this should be wired to be an input device. Very nice. So these um, uh, wire wrapping tools are, uh, what are they, about $10, $15? I don't know, something like that. They're, they're not much. Uh, OK Industries is kind of like the big name in wire wrapping. Uh, I guess they've survived, unless this is a Chinese clone of it. I don't know. But I don't think so. I think this is official. Uh, OK Industries has been there since day one. And, um, yeah, you can uh, do wire wrapping like this. Uh, you can do double stacked wire wrapping. So the po if the post is long enough, you can wire wrap one and then wire wrap one on top of it and have that post go to two different places. Um, and, um, yeah, very old school, but still works. All right, my uh, power supply didn't come with a switch, and so I have uh, there's a there's a fuse here that used to lay down flat. I lifted up one end of the fuse and and inserted a switch in series with the uh, fuse here, so that'll that'll switch it on and off. And uh, drilled a hole in the uh, in the case here, so it'll stick out the end. I'll be able to flip it up and down, so that'll be pretty cool. And uh, be ready to go.